So, Jose, you just uh, revealed the 2023 Palisade, a refreshed uh, version of, the, of that important model. What's what are you most excited about in this refresh? What new technology here? Wow, it's um, it's unbelievable. Thank you, by the way, Jimmy, for for having me. So it, there's a lot of uh, newness in this uh, Palisade 2023. On the exterior, you saw the uh, the special grill and the design, the LED uh, lights in the front, in the rear, really beautiful. On the interior, it looks like a luxury vehicle and a, a lot of um, uh, nice devices, uh, which are very convenient, like uh, SUV uh, char chargers, 12.3 inches uh, screen, digital screen, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, the therapeutical uh, seats massage, uh, the three row uh, heated seats. I mean, this is uh, unbelievable. But I think uh, the, the features that I'm the most uh, excited uh, with are those related to safety. Mm. Like uh, there is now a rear uh, braking system. There is also an enhanced uh, forward uh, control system. Uh, and then the electronics uh, of the Blue Link uh, that allows you, for example, if you've got your, your kid uh, driving the vehicle, you get an alert if, if uh, your uh, children Mm -hmm. are driving maybe beyond certain time or beyond certain area uh, or they're f driving faster than a certain speed so all these are really unbelievable uh, features so um, you know I, I could just say go on and on and on <laughs> because there are ma many more but those are the main ones yeah yeah very cool so you also announced that uh, you're going to build a new factory Tell us, about, tell us all the details. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a year ago, we made a commitment um, in front of uh, the President of the United States uh, that we would invest in the United States uh, 7.4 billion US dollars through to 2025 on many multiple uh, projects. And then uh, the, main, the main one uh, would be a battery EV dedicated plant in the USA. Uh, also, as part of that investment, uh, 7.4 billion, uh, we uh, have announced that we're going to start producing in October the Santa Fe Hybrid, uh, which is the first electrified vehicle produced in the United States, in our case, in our plant in Alabama. Uh, but also, by the end of the year, we are planning to produce the uh, Genesis GV70 uh, EV. So uh, <clears throat> we are talking uh, in Alabama uh, uh, of about $300 million of investment and uh, uh, 200 uh, additional uh, employees and in the in the new uh, huge uh, battery mm -hmm. EV project so it's uh, way more than that so uh, sticking with Montgomery why were those two products the right ones why did you choose those two the the hybrid Santa Fe and the electric uh, well uh, it was an easy uh, pick uh, right so uh, Santa Fe is um, uh, our flagship of uh, among the vehicles that we produce in the US. As you know, the flagship is the, is the Palisade, the one that we're presenting here, but is produced in Korea. Out of those produced in the, in the United States is the Santa Fe. And it's got a heritage, uh, a brand name, a nameplate in the, in the country. And the second one is that we wanted to uh, be pioneers uh, in terms of uh, luxury uh, electrification. And that's why we chose the uh, Genesis uh, GV70 EV. Uh, Genesis GV70 has already become the number one uh, seller uh, within the Genesis uh, uh, portfolio, and we are very excited to, to bring them EV produced in the US. So back to the, the EV only plant, that's going to that'll be in the US, it'll be committed to EVs, will you also have a battery plant with that? Yes. Okay, so it, it will be one of those combination plans, yes, that's cool. That, that's right. Very big yes. investment. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very important uh, in terms of uh, productivity and convenience <clears throat> uh, to have uh, the assembly plan and the battery plan together. And of course, you don't have a location yet uh, to announce, yet. but do you, do you expect to decide that this year? Uh, I think it's likely. Okay. I think it's very likely. We okay. haven't decided uh, yet, and then uh, we don't want to uh, put too much pressure on ourselves, but we're working diligently uh, to try to do it uh, in a, let's say, a proper manner. Right, right. Okay, so I want to ask you about sales. Sure. Uh, Hyundai, of course, has been doing very well in sales. Um, and what's been really fascinating to me this year, zero fleet sales. January, February, March, each every zero. month you get no fleet, all retail. Is that a is that a permanent shift? Is this a, a you know a, 
Is that the only way you want to sell cars going forward, or is no. it just because you're no, so tight on inventory? No, it's not. It's not permanent. So uh, already three years ago, uh, when I arrived to Hyundai, we decided that um, uh, we wanted to get down to a reasonable level of uh, fleet sales, which for us it's around 10%. Mm -hmm. So in fact, last year, 2021, uh, we decreased sales by 24% uh, in fleet sales, mm -hmm. and then a total uh, fleet mix uh, ended up being around 6%. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a little bit uh, may, may be low, but it was okay. But this year, because of the uh, uh, cheap shortage uh, and then because of uh, the great uh, retail momentum that the brand uh, was having, we decided to prioritize uh, deliveries to the dealers. The dealers are very pleased uh, about that. And as you know, already last year, we grew uh, our sales, retail sales by 23%. The market only grew by 4.7%. And in the first quarter, we were able to uh, have some modest retail increase, 1.4%, mm -hmm. but the market was down almost 15%. So <laughs> the dealers appreciate that. Uh, dealer profitability is very important for us. They've been uh, making uh, more money than ever before. And we will continue uh, to do so for the foreseeable future until until the short situation will end. But in normal conditions, I would say uh, around 10% is a healthy uh, number. Also considering that uh, I think the, the role of fleet is changing. So is not uh, uh, about uh, rental, it is about mobility. So we want to be part of the mobility uh, services and def definitely we will be back uh, maybe in the months to come. Well, how do you mean that? You selling to, you're talking about like Uber type companies or? Um... I think uh, I think there are many uh, mobility platforms uh, that they are uh, getting created. Uh, and then ourselves, we for example, have committed uh, to provide Ionic 5s to Motional, which is a, a joint venture of a hand day together with Aptiv, right? So mm -hmm. those companies are working in the mobility space. And then if we only did uh, retail sales, we wouldn't be able to uh, get into this market. Uh, once we will have the proper capacity mm -hmm. and supply situation will get back to normal, you may expect us to, to get into uh, those channels. So. Also today, the Hyundai Ionic 5 was honored uh, repeatedly, but most importantly with World Car of the Year. Um, how is that um, received by your dealers? I know the, there's some interesting pricing around it, or you, they, they make their money on the Ionic 5 and uh, not so much from gross margin. Well, the dealers are very excited with Ionic, uh, and then in fact, the vast majority of them uh, they applied uh, to be uh, to become a Ionic uh, dealer, uh, which is um, uh, has implications in, term, in terms of uh, charging infrastructure and some other investments. And they're very, very excited and very happy. I can tell you as well that uh, following uh, the advice from our own dealers, we decided to make some uh, adjustments to the dealer margin uh, of Ionic, and uh, the adjustments were received very, very uh, positively. Jose, thank you so much. Great to see you. Jamie, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right.